We're not going to talk about that today. Biggest call to my skillet. Biggest call to my skill. Biggest call to you call my call. I never want to see you standing still. Now get off. Hello and welcome once again to my channel, Chaz's channel. I am Chaz. You're welcome. As I think I made fairly clear in the intro, we're not going to be talking about this today, unfortunately. Now, the reason being is because I bought a couple of lot item auctions on sale uh, on eBay. And there's a lot of cool stuff. It's chock full of goodness. And I want to share it with you. Also because I'm a little bit anal retentive. I've had them for a couple weeks and I haven't really dived in, searched, played with them, cleaned them because I don't want to take it all out to repackage it, to pull them out out of the box again, to show you what I got. And I mean, I got a whole ton of stuff over here that I want to show you that I plan on doing videos. That's been sitting here close for a month now, so I'm going to get to it because I like to procrastinate. That being said, I'm going to give you a quick update too. I'm working on sponsorship. NAS so far isn't working out, but I haven't given up hope. I just don't have a NAS with me at the moment. I'm also trying to work on a, a mascot. I, I'm trying to think of a different way to put it. I'm trying to work on a mascot. Jim Sterling has the Cornflake Homunculus. Pat the NES Punk has Rob and Donkey Kong and DK Jr. Uh, who else? Uh, this, I'll, I'll pop it up. This thing has Teddy. I don't know what the hell show this is, but most people have a mascot. I am working on one too, and hopefully I will have one in the near future. So if you have any ideas, please post them in the comments, no matter how ridiculous. In fact, I'm opening myself up for ridicule, which I do expect and I appreciate. But also, I have a lot of videos coming up too. There's a Double Dragon 4 review. Granted, the game's been out for two months, but I've been working on it for a while, and I plan on getting it out there sooner or later. Content will be there. Put my spin on it. Hopefully you'll like it. Also, another one here is the Indie Box. There is a stack of probably 15 of these. It's well over a year's worth of supply. We're going to do a super indie unboxing coming up in the near future as, you know, my unboxings that I started were indie box. I was away for a little bit. I stacked up six or seven of them. I planned on doing a super unboxing with those six or seven. Now it's, you know, over double. So, you know, again, I procrastinate. But I got a lot of ideas, a lot of content. That is the point of me telling you all this. But without further ado, I'm not going to keep going on. We're going to jump into all the garbage I have here. Well, I'm sorry, not all of it. One of it, the big one I have right now. We're going to take a look and see what I got. And if you're a fan of retro stuff, specifically retro import Nintendo items, you are going to love the items that I have. Paid a good price on it. But you know what? Hell, without further ado, let's take a look. Well, all right, here it is. Here's my box of Famicom goodness. This, like I said, was an eBay auction. Purchased it for about 225 and that does include shipping. And I've already told everything up here by eBay prices, and this stuff is definitely worth a lot more than $200. And I think I really did make out like a bandit on this. I'm very pleased with my purchase. So without further ado, we'll dive right in. This being a Famicom auction filled with Famicom items, how would it not be complete without an actual Famicom and a Famicom disc system? Now I gotta say, this is the whitest Famicom I have ever seen. I have two of them. One is AV modded, minus an LED. The other one is still a work in progress, but they are nowhere near as white as it. This is in absolute pristine condition like it just came out of the box. I like the fact that it's already modded and it does have an LED on it. So I can actually crack this thing open, take a look at it, see how it is modded with the LED, and I can do it to my own, which I did plan on doing. Now, I already have a Famicom disc system, but it's always good to have more than one in my opinion, especially if you can't get a disc to run on one, which does have something to do with the disc head. An extra bonus is that both of these also came with the AC adapters. And yes, I do have a step-down converter so I can easily attach these. Alright, next we'll move on to controllers. There are a lot of controllers in here from Hori, which I really like the stuff that they do. Here is a joystick. I'm pretty sure this was the equivalent to the NES Advantage. This is a very good looking joystick. A little bit of yelling, but that's okay. Oh, also I have not one, but two Hori cards. One sealed, one open. Now from my understanding, these controllers were specifically made for RPG players in order to keep one hand free in case you wanted to draw maps or search through a strategy guide. See what else? Uh, what else did Hori make that's in here? Ah, here we go. 
There is a Hori Trackball, good for games like Centipede and Centipede. I'm sure there's other trackball games that I really can't think of right now. Alright, let's see what else I got in here. Ah, here is the Family Computer Joy Ball. Is this made by Hori? No, this one's made by Hal, yeah, Hal Laboratory. And I believe that this is actually the Japanese equivalent to the Quick Shot. At least that's what it said online. So this is the Japanese version of the Quick Shot. Pretty cool. All right, sticking with Hori controllers, I know I have a bunch more in here. Um, ah, here we go. This one's not right up here. Is one Hori controller and another one and another one. And last but not least, another one. Now this one, I believe, has a microphone built into it. Either that or it's a speaker. I'm pretty sure it's a microphone, though. I'll have to try to test it out. I just gotta get a copy of Legend of Zelda. But four loose Hori controllers. Nice! And there's still more controllers. Here is another one-handed controller by ASI. I believe that's how you pronounce it. I actually had one of these for the PlayStation, and I specifically used it for role-playing games to keep my hand free to draw maps and such. Ah, here's another one by Hori, the Laser Command. Now, from what I've seen online, you hook this up with your Famicom controller using the one that is hardwired into the system. There is no A and B button, but there is turbo options. The 1 and 2, I believe, selects from player 1 and 2 and you just use a bigger button in order to move. Might be a little bit too much work to get that controller out of there. Ah, now here's something I want to plan on seeing. I don't think I have a game to test it out on, but there is the Konami Hypershot, and this, I believe, specifically was for their Hyper games, which, as we would know it, is track and field. Alright, we got some Bandai controllers in here, too. Ah, I have a boxed Super Controller 2, and also a loose one. Now this is a programmable controller, and I believe the Nintendo version of it is the Bandai Mega Controller. You can program all different types of moves and combos and things in here, similar to the controllers that were used for Street Fighter 2. Now obviously there was no Street Fighter 2 for the Nintendo, unless you count the bootlegs, so I believe that these were actually used to memorize passwords, make it a little bit easier for certain button combinations. There also is a mini game on here similar to the Game & Watch. That's a nice little extra, so you can actually game while playing a game. Right, let's see what else we got in here. Oh, oh wow. Here is another controller by Hori. Still boxed, nice and packaged. This is the Wing Commander? Yeah, the Wing Commander controller. This is a fantastic looking controller. Man, I do say fantastic a lot. But it's actually pretty cool. I wonder if I can use these for anything other than a flight game. Uh, you know, probably not considering that joystick. Oh well, we'll see what we can do with it. Alright, let's see what else. Uh, oh, hey, hey! Alright, you know what, this, I was not aware that this was in here. Here is an Arkanoid analog controller. Now this controller, I know, came with Arkanoid 2. It's out of the box, it's loose, but still, this is pretty cool. I honestly had no idea this was in here. Now, all I need is a copy of Arkanoid. Alright, so that's all the controllers. Moving on to accessories now. And there's a good amount in here. From my understanding, accessories for the Famicom are kind of rare and a little bit valuable. At least by me going on eBay and from some of the forums that I've seen. But there are a few in here. I'll start with the I'd say least impressive one. But this came with a super adapter. Not the most impressive, but it's a cool thing to see. Alright, now I'll move on to the good stuff. This I thought was pretty cool. This is also by Hori. It is a family computer adapter for your AC and RF adapter. So obviously the way this would work is you want to keep your things neat and tidy, get a little extra space. This thing pulls out, kind of twists it to put them back in. Can't get any use out of it considering everything's AV modified, but you know, this is really cool. Now this thing, I don't know what the hell it is. But it's by Hori, so it can't be bad. It is the Game Repeater. 
Now I know with Famicoms, from pictures I've seen, you can hook up all kinds of stuff to this. I know there's a cassette player, headphones, all other kinds of things. This, I do not know what it is. I don't know if it's similar to one of those. I believe it's called a Tiddler, where you can kind of edit your own videos, but this has a record button. It also has, you know, playback. So I think this was some kind of recording device, but either way, it looks cool. Definitely gonna have to do a little bit more research on it to find out what it is, but I definitely like the look of this, and I definitely say definitely a lot. All right, moving on. This one, kind of leery about trying it out. I don't know who's worn it before me, but this is the SD station for the family computer. Now this, I believe, is just a way to listen to your family account through headphones, which is pretty neat. You plug your controller in here, plug the thing in there, and you can also hook it up to your stereo. At least that's what the box says. But that's cool, if you can get audio coming out of your stereo with this thing, hey, you know, why the hell not? I guess it makes no difference if it's coming out of your TV though. Eh, go figure. Alright, so here it is. Here's the last accessory controller, so to speak. It is the Bandai Family Trainer. Now obviously everybody will know this as the power pad. Or by its counterpart before Nintendo bought it, the Family Fitness Pad. I believe that's what it was called. But either way, this was the Japanese version of that. I've never seen one, and hell, I didn't even know it existed. But this is really cool, and I'm glad I have this. I'll definitely try it out. Alright, so everything else in this box is pretty much games. It ranges from Famicom Disc, Famicom, to Super Famicom. I'll show you the Super Famicom games first. All classics, all good games. First we have... The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. Uh, next, there's also Super Mario Kart, another great game. And last but not least, Final Fantasy VI, or as everyone knows in America, Final Fantasy III. If there could be any Super Nintendo game in this box, I don't think there would be a three different games that I would rather have. Now, unfortunately, there's only one Famicom disc game in here, which is okay because I have a whole another video I'm going to be doing on a Famicom disc game lot I got. But this one, it's by Wavejack, and it's called Galaxy Odyssey. Now, from what I've read, and again, my information is kind of sparse on this, but the Wavejack series of games was supposed to be kind of touted as the Thinking Man game. There was a lot of extra paperwork, in some cases cassette tapes, which were meant to help you play the game. The cassette that is included is actually meant to help you with a specific puzzle in the game that involved music. I think this looks really cool considering all the extra stuff. I'm a sucker for extra things. From what I understand though, these games weren't too popular considering what it took to play the games. Either way, definitely cool. Lots of text. Still can play this game. The other two games in the series I'm not too sure about. If you get a chance, check them out. And if you want, leave a comment and tell me if you know anything else about them. All right, all that's left in here is Famicom games. I'll show you the box ones first, and the only sealed one that I have in here, and that is Double Dragon 3. Now this game gets a lot of hate. I really don't think it deserves it. I've always had fun with this game, and I did find it challenging. And while it's not the favorite in the series, I still have a fondness for it. All right, here, here's one by Irem. I have absolutely no idea what it is, but looking at the back of the box, it does look like I can easily play this without having to know Japanese. Oh, I've been meaning to play these for some time. I've actually been meaning to do a reproduction card on these so I can play them in English. But there is a boxed copy of Final Fantasy 2 and Final Fantasy 3. I've always loved the Final Fantasy series. I've played all of the retro ones up until 7. The only two I've never played have been 2 and 3 for the Famicom. And as a bonus, they, they each came with a strategy guide. Well, all right, everything left is just loose copies of games. The first one is the original Final Fantasy. If I'm not mistaken, this one does go for a little bit of money. Granted, it's just a cart, but I don't have the English version of it. And this is still a cool item to have in my collection. Keeping with role-playing games, I have Dragon's Quest IV and Dragon's Quest II. Now, I actually have the Dragon Warrior versions of these. The only one I'm missing is three. I have played... Well, I've played one. I don't think I've ever played two. Huh. I'm going to have to get on that. These ones, unfortunately, I know for a fact I won't understand. Next one we got in here, there's a copy of Ice Climber. Here's a classic which I actually already have boxed and complete, but now I have an extra copy. Super Mario Bros. 3. Great game. Nothing more needs to be said about it. And last but not least, a game that I have never seen 
Famicom version of Bionic Commando. This one card alone goes for at least $40, and I was surprised to see that. But in the end, I think it made sense because this is unedited compared to the version that we got. This is a game I will be playing through in order to see it unedited before the changes in the American version. This is one of my favorite games, if you couldn't tell from my unboxing of the Retrobit Generations console, which is garbage by the way. Do not get it. Link in the description. Well here it is. Here's everything. Bask in its wonderful Famicom glory. All in all, a very good haul. Very happy with everything that I got here. Very impressed and pleased with myself too. I can't believe I found this. Well, there you have it. Another one in the bag, as they say. You know, something, uh, something just doesn't feel right. Kind of empty. Bare, if you will. Ah! That's better. All right, so, this concludes another episode. I want to say thank you to everyone who's watching, liking these videos, and subscribing, and I will tell you a little bit about the contest I will have going up when we hit 200 subscribers. I'll be giving something away, haven't figured out what yet, it might be a game, might be something from my collection, something that I probably want to sell but figure maybe someone will like. And still ironing out the details, but what I'm thinking about doing is doing kind of like a meme parody contest type of deal. Now what do I mean by that? I'm going to show you some pictures that some of my friends have created. Here is this one, me as Mega Man. Here is another one, with I guess this is the one million dollar YouTube gold plaque. Uh, here's one my friend Ryan did. Uh, thinks I'm a bong head. And last but not least, and please, if you are a young child, avert your eyes, or at least don't tell your parents that you're going to see this, this one. This one is actually my favorite one. I did laugh when I saw this. So I'm thinking about doing some sort of contest like that, seeing what people come up with, what stills they can make, and just kind of posting them in the comments. And again, very, very at the bottom, basement, idea stage of this. Not even at the drawing board. Not even there yet. So either way, thanks for watching. As always... Can't stress it enough because I am a shameless self-promoter. Like, subscribe, hope you enjoy this video. Nas, I'm still coming for you. Sponsorship.